Welcome to this latest edition of Real Deal Podcast on this 4th of March, 2021. Uh, this is episode 763 of the Real Deal Podcast, Snowfall edition. Of course, we are on season four, episode three, all the way down. A very, very good episode um, as the snowfall train continues to march on um this was an episode that you know looking at some looking at the themes i would say revenge and new friends will be the two themes that i would zero in on um, in this particular episode you know this was an episode that you really you really uncovered some not not uncovered anything particularly new but you really get, you know, you really understand where Franklin, where he gets, how he operates and where he gets it from. You really like, you, get, you got a sense with that, with the whole dynamic between him and his mother. I will uh, get on that. I will talk about that later on in the program, but they, they are two peas in the same pod. Uh, we begin though, this episode begin though with Franklin and uh, Officer Nix. Uh, they meet in a diner. Franklin is already there. He's reading the book, has a half-eaten sandwich with some orange juice. Nix comes in, and immediately, immediately, you know, Franklin checks Nix, um, you know, checks Nix about uh, what transpired. Nix, of course, is basically saying, "Hey, man, you set me up, and you know, you set me up, and then proceed. You set me up after Nix, you know, after Franklin checked him about going, me going to see his dad." And Franklin, you know, basically threatens Nix without saying what would trans what would happen if you know if he came at his family again. And you know, as Nix is, uh, you know, basically as Nix says, basically says, you know, what you know, what are you going to do? You know, then you know Franklin kind of smiles and basically calls Nix out for basically being that. Uh, Look, you took the money, you know, you know, you took the money, like, you know, you basically worked, in essence, he's saying, but you basically work for me. <laughs> like, you took the money, and, you know, the job didn't get done. Um, Nick's has it, in, has it in his head that Franklin was trying to set him up. This, folks, this, this scene is good. This was a, a great scene to start, you know, to kind of kick off the show. But this is a absolute... What I mean, mismatch. This is a mismatch. Nix is, and, and even Franklin knows that Nix is in over his head when it comes to dealing uh, dealing with Franklin. Nix is, I. You see why Franklin was able to get the best of Andre last season because this guy, Nix, was his number two. Um, Nix as a cop, as a bad cop, as a dirty cop, is just is just dumb, dumber than a box of rocks. I mean, the guy just. Has no, has no clue how to be corrupt and and it was all you know flushed out through all through the course of this episode um and franklin you know basically no, franklin knows that this guy is, is, is no master i mean this is you know this is chess this is chess versus checkers and you know we'll, we'll see what will transpire we'll, we'll flush out what happened with Nick later on in the uh, episode but again, Nix is clearly in, clearly in over his head when dealing with Franklin. Franklin is, is you know is way smarter and more more conniving than Nix will ever be. Nix, you know, Nix had it good. He could you know, you have a situation where you are uh, you're getting paid by a drug by a drug dealer who's a multi million dollar drug dealer, and who would you know set you up for great collars as a cop now nick's last in the last episode nick's goes into scully's place with no plan whatsoever with no plan which frankly which basically was nick's fault going in there with no plan and thinking that he's going to walk up in you know scully's place which is like a which was like a fortress and and, and just you know and they're gonna you know and those guys are just gonna just uh let them let them arrest them um, so Nix didn't have Nix didn't have a plan in that episode. In, Latin, in the previous episode, he definitely did not have a plan in this episode, and he Nix made mistake after mistake. Um, 
in this uh, uh, in this episode. And again, in this scene, you saw now again this compare this scene to the first time when Franklin met Nix uh, when he came across Nix and when uh, he's riding, you know, he's um, Nix puts the gun to his head in the back of the car. And back in season three, Franklin thinks he you know thinks he might kill him. Has a tear down his eye, tear rolling down his eye. This is, of course, following the, the Andre shooting, following the, um, him, uh, Franklin killing Andre. Uh, complete 180 in regards to this scene versus that scene. In this scene, Franklin is in complete control. Nix is the one that's unnerved and that really doesn't have it. Really, just doesn't know what he's in. You know, doesn't know who he's dealing with. Even though he thinks he knows, he really doesn't know who he's dealing with when it comes when it came to Franklin. Stavo and Teddy. So we uh, recognized last episode. We know last episode Gustavo's family was killed. Gustavo, of course, wants revenge. Um, Teddy knows Gustavo well. So Gustavo, before Gustavo was hanged, was casing the police department. And before he can even take a couple of steps, he was knocked over the head by what it turned out to be some uh, Mexican intelligence that was hired by Teddy. Teddy knew, Teddy, you know, initially tried to talk Gustavo out, out, of, out of going after the cops by himself. Uh, and then he just shoved Teddy to the ground and, you know, came, you know, went on with his shotgun. And, you know, Teddy, listen, Ted, uh, Teddy knows he needs Gustavo at this point in the story, at this point uh, in the story. So he's not going, you know, he was not going to let anything happen to Gustavo. Gustavo would have gotten himself killed had he just acted on just, the, the pure emotion of rage that was understand, understandably so um, as he uh, was going to kill, he was going to kill those cops who murdered, uh, brutally murdered his brother and his wife uh, and his wife. So, you know, so Teddy uh, not finds out that, uh, so Teddy uh, keep, basically, basically protects Gustavo from himself. We'll talk more about this storyline in the uh, the best scenes category when we get that when we get that far. As we go to the best scenes, we already talked about Franklin and Nix in the diner. So Nix capturing Sissy. So following the diner conversation, where basically <laughs> Franklin said, "Shut the fuck up and do your job," Nix. Um, gets this trumped up charge. Trump gets this bullshit charge on Sissy Franklin's father, Franklin's mother, arrest her um, in her own house in front of Alton. Franklin says, I, "You know, I'll take care of it to kind of calm Alton down." And he takes Sissy. And he drops the other officer off, takes Sissy uh, by the grave site of of one, of course, Andre Wright, ties her up. Had her, you know, she had, I think, I don't think she had a blindfold on, but he ties her up, takes her in there, takes her in the grave site, the graveyard, says, hey, your son killed, you know, killed, you know, killed this man, killed Andre, he was a good man. And he, um, you know, does, I, I didn't, like, so the thing about the scene, that I never thought for one second that uh, Nix was going to kill Sissy, not for one second. And again, this is Nix just acting out of pure, just emotion. This is Nick's really not having a plan whatsoever. Similar to the, to the last episode when he went along, when he went in with the cops to Scully's, um, uh, to Scully's place, not near a plan. And this, you know, we will see, you know, we'll, we'll see what this, you know, we can see what this led to. This led, to, of course, to Nick's being transferred out of, uh, of the police, of, of, of the, off the street and into some Rinky Dink uh, job where he, you know, in office, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll expound on that later on in the episode. But again, this was Nick's with no plan. Um, Sissy, uh, so Sissy ends up at a bus stop. She gets picked up by Jerome and and Louis and also Alton and Franklin as well. Um, so you know, a nice little family moment there. You had Nick's, you had um, Franklin asking. Asking Sissy, what did what did what did Nick's tell her? 
and she basically says nothing that she already didn't know, meaning telling, meaning you know, she already knew that Franklin had uh, killed Andre. So, um, and he and she tells she tells Franklin, go make the deal with go make the Paul Davis deal, go make the deal with with Paul Davis, um, the Paul Davis deal. So, you had that going on uh, in regard in terms of Nick's capture and sissy. Gustavo and Teddy in the police station. Um, this is Gustavo explaining uh, Teddy. Gustavo Teddy explained to Gustavo why he why he had him knocked out instead of, uh, had him knocked out so he wouldn't of course go uh, and get himself killed by the, by those cops who uh, killed his uh, family. And then he he tells Teddy tells him that he that that he indeed is CIA. And uh, drug dealer Gustavo said he figured as much, uh, basically joking with him, saying you're not cool enough to be a drug dealer. So Gustavo says, "Hey, Teddy says, hey, I'm in. If I'm in the CIA, that means you're in the CIA, as far as uh, having protection." And they they talk to the Mexican intelligence. They construct a plan in terms of how to get their revenge on um, Gustavo's family's uh, killers. Um, and they make it, the, the, uh, the intelligence made it clear that they wanted no violence, uh, that they wanted no violence. You see, uh, we see Wanda, we see the return of Wanda, who of course we know is, is you know, is, is in her apex of being, of, of crackdom, of being a crackhead. So Wanda, so we get back to the projects that, that, want, that Teddy, not Teddy, that uh, Leon is running. Wanda and Leon have a bit of a reunion. Wanda, of course, tried to uh, run some game on some uh, local dealers in which uh, she tried to shortchange some local dealers. Leon had to had to intercede and, and, and check the dealers before before Wanda was about to get, you know, got about to get beat up. And then you caught you see, you know, you see that Leon still has feelings for Wanda, but at this point, you know, I mean, he can't do anything for her. Uh, Leon Wanda is complaining about the quality of the product, which is important because Leon, of course, and Leon and Franklin are on, are on the outs. Franklin has cut Leon off as far as um, as far as the drugs. So, so so Leon has basically run out of drugs, and he now is cutting is like trying to you know you can only cut the drugs down so much before. Uh, before they have just, you know, before they have, they have no use whatsoever. So he has customers complaining about the quality of the product. Of course, he does not have a connection um, at this point. We, we saw what happened last episode when he tried to, when he, when he tried to go um, get a new connect uh, at the, uh, you know, at the word of one of his younger, one of his younger soldiers. And that turned out almost, almost get him killed. So Leon's in a tough spot right now. Um, he doesn't have a connect. And also have, has the prospects of the fact that Scully could be uh, could could be coming after him as well. Um, then we see we see Wanda uh, lose a tooth, thinking lose a tooth, and you know she is. Which and the reason I bring it up, I, I don't bring I didn't bring it up to, as comedy. I, I think Wanda is on. I think Wanda could be on her way out. You, know, you saw a lot of Wanda. In this episode, for a character that's basically a big character, not a big character, her role has this has diminished since uh, since the beginning, uh, since season one. But uh, I, I think Wanda, and I'll, I'll I'll make you know make that make that save that for some some predictions for the next episode. I think Wanda could be on could be on her way out, um, could be on on her way uh, completely out. So Franklin goes to an older couple. At the bookstore now. Remember, a couple seasons ago, Franklin went in to find some information about the Black Panthers. This was the same bookstore that he found that information in. Now, here's here's the thing. So you had two scenes. Uh, you had two scenes in this bookstore. The first scene, Franklin goes in with the older couple, with the older I guess the, with the older couple. He recognizes that you know that their store. It is is basically being under siege and in terms of wanting to be bought bought out by some land developers. He he comes in, you know, buttoned down, casually dressed, 
with a three button shirt. He is that, he comes in as that kid that they knew growing up, okay? Smiling, says, I'm here to help you. That's the first scene. When Sissy gets captured by Nix and says, go make the deal with Davis. Now, keep in mind, give you some context, Dave, Paul Davis, a developer who has political connections, wants that property. Sissy, of course, we know she's into real estate. She wants, she's trying to get, make a deal with Paul Davis. She wants to uh, try to get in with Paul Davis because of how, you know, because of, you know, his connections. And the only way she can get in with Paul Davis is to get that property. Of course, Franklin and Sissy know, know, know these uh, people very well, from know these people very well. So basically, Franklin comes in the first time, I'll take care of you. He gets them to sign the property over to him. He says, hey, we'll pick up all the costs. You don't have to move. You don't have to do anything. We, we will pick up, we, will, we got you covered. Second time he comes in, comes in a straight, you know, th not three piece, he come, comes in a, in a, in a two piece suit with, a, with his cane, stoic face, serious face, comes in and says, hey, um, I, sold your, I, sold your Dave, I sold your property to Paul Davis. You got to move the guys on Friday. Completely, completely different demeanor. Um, this was, you know, Damson Eldris was absolutely in his bag in this episode with, with the acting, not only, you know, from start to finish, especially, especially in this scene where you saw a different Franklin Saint versus the scene, original scene that you saw with the, with the older couple. And basically they're gonna, you know, force the, old, force the older couple out he says, "Hey, I will. We will get you another property somewhere else. But you got to. You got to move out this. You have to get out this building because Paul Davis now owns the building. Paul Davis, of course, is a rich, rich land developer who is taking over some, taking over properties throughout the, um, <coughs> excuse me, throughout Compton. And again, has a lot of pull and a lot of political connections. Matter of fact, Paul Davis." Paul Davis gets uh, Franklin meets Paul Davis and he gets uh, Nick's off his tail. Paul Davis is the one that, that had Nick's um, taken off the basically taken out, basically had Nick's reassigned. And this is this clearly is a guy who has a lot of pull. Still have we, you know, still haven't flushed out his character. He just got and of course he's played by Stephen Williams. You remember Stephen, I mean Stephen Williams has been around forever, but it, the last thing Stephen Williams was in I, that I saw him was was the shy season one, um, and I thought his role in that I thought his role in that was going to be bigger throughout the course of, of, of the following seasons, but it turned out turns out he was in only that one season. But again, Stephen Williams has been around for a number of years and a number and it was in a couple a few a number of black exploitation movies back in the day. Has been around for uh, for a long time, so very good actor. Um, but again, this is a guy that we know is going to have some dirt, has some dirt. It's not, you know, he's, he's not going to be a vital character moving forward because you have Sissy and Franklin are two peas in the same pod because they both had this ideal that they are doing the wrong things for the right reasons. So <laughs> Sissy knows what time it is with Franklin. She knows that this guy's a you know, kingpin. But she believes that they're going to get into real estate and that they will use the real estate business to get them to to remove themselves uh, completely eventually from the from the drug game. Both Franklin and Sissy have this thought process. And also remember, remember this with Franklin. Franklin wants to separate eventually separate himself from Teddy Matt from Teddy from Teddy Matt. So he, he eventually wants to separate himself from Teddy, doesn't doesn't trust Teddy, uh, doesn't completely trust Teddy, realizes, and we, he saw you saw his father mention this last season, that Teddy is using him and will get another drug dealer uh, as soon as he gets done using Franklin. That's what his father said to him in, in season three. So Franklin doesn't completely trust Teddy and he wants to eventually uh, branch out from, uh, from Teddy Mac. So again, they both, have similar, uh, they both have uh, 
you know, similar thought, have, have a similar thought process in terms of what direction they want to go in. But we all know, you know, we all know that they're, you know, once you're in the drug game, that, <coughs> that there's basically only two ways out, you know, jail or death. And you see Franklin, you know, Franklin has a little Jamie St. Patrick, you know. Yeah, I saw some, I saw some Jamie St. Patrick. I know a couple of people on the threads said Stringer Bell. Yeah, I can, yeah, I think he's smart. I just think he's smart overall. I think he's smart to be honest with you. Like, he has some James St. He has some has some James St. Patrick, you know, to be honest with you. So he gets the bookstore, they get the old couple out. And frankly, of course, now has a new friend in Paul Davis. He has Nick's off his back. Um he has Nick's off his back. Uh Gustavo and Teddy at the shootout at the house. So Gustavo, so before we get to the shootout in the house, Gustavo kills one of the policemen's henchmen in a bar. Now, before they they were casing a bar that one of the guys that, that was gonna be in, of course the Mexican intelligence gave them information on the whereabouts of, of all the uh of all the people that killed um, Gustavo's uh, folks, killed Gustavo's family, their goal was to, their goal, Gustavo and Teddy, is to flush them out, have them on the run. Gustavo, Teddy flat out tells Gustavo, hey, you know, don't do anything in public. So he sends in Gustavo in there by himself. Gustavo goes in the bar, beats the dude up, and proceeds to kill him. Uh, and proceeds to kill him. Um, and now, you know, now he did accomplish putting those guys because once they found out about it, those guys go on the run. They on they go on a lamb. But Teddy says, you know, basically you put a target on our back. And Gustavo says, what you know, what did you expect me to do? Kill my family. So we get to the shootout where they've uh, they found the location on the guys. Now, mind you, it's only Gustavo. And Teddy, because they don't have, they don't have, no long, they don't have the backup of the Mexican intelligence. Because they told them, we don't want violence. We will back you up until up until violence starts. So they're on their own with this uh, situation. Teddy plays basically plays sharpshooter, takes out three or four people. They're both vested up. Teddy and, and Gustavo. Gustavo goes in a uh, sets up in the car. And we don't see him until the end of the scene. So Teddy gets shot, but survives it. He has a vest on and basically kills everybody. Kills, basically kills everybody in the house with the exception of the two guys who go, who go, who make it to the getaway car and in their lives. That's where Gustavo takes care of both of them. And also even but before that, he gets shot as well. So both of them got shot, but they both were, of course, vested up. Teddy finishes off the guy, the main the main crooked sheriff, uh, kills him, finish, chokes him, um, shoots him in both kneecaps, chokes him, and then of course that's how they uh, are yell at the uh, as the guy is dead, you know, for finally avenging. So he finally, so they both get their uh, well. Teddy Gustavo gets his revenge. This is gonna be listen. This partnership is gonna be interesting with these two. Um, because Gustavo, Teddy needs Gustavo for now, for now. But Teddy, listen, we, we know how crooked Teddy can be. And we know Teddy's only as good, you're only as good to Teddy as what he can, as what you can do for Teddy. Uh, will Gustavo eventually pick up on that? Uh, we'll, we'll certainly, we will certainly see. Uh, a couple of things. Um, the reporter, Irene, continues to investigate Franklin. She found out through a police officer that Franklin's charge from season two when he killed Kevin was completely wiped off, wiped off the slate. Um, she also finds out, you know, so finds out more about, uh, we also find out more about her. Um, we see, you know, we see, you know, we see her, we see her baby daddy, um, <laughs> the dude who's been around forever. I forgot his name, the actor. The brother has been around for a long time, but they're not together. Uh, she wants him to spend the night. He says he's found, he's moved on and found somebody else. And we, we know, know, and I noticed this throughout the 
throughout the course of the first couple of episodes that she she likes to drink. She loves to drink. So, she, so she's a bit of an alcoholic. Um, we already talked about Paul Davis and how vital uh, his role is going to be uh, moving forward uh, throughout the course of uh, you know throughout the course of of, of the season. A um, couple of things I, I wanted to mention uh, before, I, before I let you go. So I got Franklin saying as the MVP. She should have been the MVP last episode. To be honest with you, uh, he these first three episodes, Bamps and Eldris has been just you know, I mean, been Golden Globe Emmy caliber performances that he's putting up. Um, so we saw we saw Man Boy meet with uh, Jerome and Louis and mentioned that things were better when it was just those three. And we see uh, so. Again, you see Man Boy not crazy or thrilled at all about being, about doing business, about Franklin being back in the mix. Remember when Franklin was, was injured and recuperate, uh, recovering, you had, it was just, it was Man Boy, Louis, and uh, Man Boy, Louis, and Jerome. Of course, Louis doesn't trust Man Boy whatsoever. Um, we still find that, we still see that Jerome is bothered by uh, killing, you know, killing, killing one of Scully's people at that at the shootout at the warehouse in the last episode. Man, boy, was joking about it, joking around with him. Uh, Rome really didn't, you know, it wasn't in a playful mood when it came to when he when that was brought up again. So we saw it. So, you know, don't forget about don't forget about that from that standpoint in terms of man, boy, and we know we know Louis does not trust man boy um whatsoever this listen this was a setup episode next episode you know episode four is going to be a major episode in terms of in terms of action um coming off of the warehouse shootout you know that they were they were going to kind of settle things down and give you more plot points and give you more lay more groundwork for future episodes and that's exactly what they did uh in terms in regards to the business that both uh franklin and sissy are trying to get involved with in regards with, with this with the, with this real estate and now with with this guy Paul Paul Davis. Now uh, we'll see what happens. Um, with Leon, um, in terms of him, in terms of his you know his drug basically his drug supplies running out. Again, I think Wanda. I, I'm predicting that Wanda is going to die in the next episode. To be honest with you, I, I think that that you know that tooth. That two, her tooth coming out again. She's a crackhead. Any crackhead's tooth would come out. That's not unusual. But I just, I, you know, they, they were just kind of focusing on her a little bit too much to be a, to be that, to be a, a just a recurring character. I, I can definitely see her, see her being taken out uh, next episode. Also, they continue to pull threads from season two. They also discussed. Irene also found out through the cop about the missing DEA, DEA agent that, of course, Gustavo killed in season two that had infiltrated Lucia's family. And again, Lucille doesn't seem like she's going to ever come back. She didn't come back in, in season three. I don't probably, she probably, she, maybe she'll come back in season four, but I doubt it. But you, if you remember going to season two, there was a, that, that young DEA, DEA, DEA agent, DEA agent uh, infiltrated Lucille's family and ended up being killed by Gustavo last season. And basically, and that's, you know, you had Teddy saying, listen, you think you could survive killing a C, killing another DEA agent without my help? And so, you know, kind of confirmed the fact that he was, you know, to Gustavo, that he was CIA. Again, very good episode. Uh, looking forward to episode four. And, you know, Franklin's going just deeper and deeper. And Franklin's starting to get, Franklin is starting to get his swag back as far as, um, this episode, he was, you know, he was in, for the most part, he was in complete control. Um, you know, physically, he's going to be limping. He, he, of course, he got shot three times. He's going to be limping for a while. But uh, one thing that you have to take note of when it comes to Franklin Saint is his mind. And it's, it's the thing that man, that man boy mentioned last episode. His mind is as sharp as ever. Um, and will certainly be, there'll be a lot to come. Uh, uh, com coming up in, in, in episode four. So that's going to wrap it up for this latest edition of The Real Deal Podcast. I will see you next time for episode four.
of season four of Snowfall. I'm out.